Hello and welcome back to Stationier's Guide. In today's episode I will be showing how to make this contraption. Yes, a logic circuit that will help you to automate your lights, meaning that when the darkness comes your lights light up automatically. So, without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, you will need some logic circuitry, obviously. And to do that you need to take it from your electronics printer and the following are the chips that you will need. First, we will be looking for kit logic IO and we need to print two of these. One will be for the logic reader, another one will be for the batch writer. So two kit logic IO. Then the second one that you will want to be looking for is kit logic processor. We will need one because we will con convert it to the uh, compare you and then final component we need one kit logic memory so all in all a rather simple contraption however it makes your life a lot easier meaning you don't have to go and manually turn on and turn off the lights so there we go all right let me just put these into my inventory and of course you will be needing some amount of of course cable coil and i'm thinking like 20 30 ish but first let me show you what else do we need. We also will need a daylight sensor and if we go a little bit high up here you can tell that we have a daylight sensor that we use for our solar tracking. You can actually reuse the same thing and here we shall be putting somewhere the logic circuitry. I was thinking on the below part. Now what also helps so you don't have too many chips and sensors to follow is that you can set them on an isolated network by using a mini transformer as we have here. So right, daylight sensor. Now let's go to placing the logic chips. As said, I will be connecting to this, hooking up to this existing line to make sure that we have access to the daylight sensor because well you have to be connected with a cable coil to your daylight sensor for this in order to work. Now, this cubicle is the area where we will be placing, so pardon me for it not being perfectly aligned or something like that. So, let's see. First things first, we want to be placing a logic reader. That is the reader that will be reading the value from the daylight sensor. And it will be reading if it's active. So, if the sensor is active, that means it's daylight. And we want to see if it's, you know, daytime or nighttime. And based on that, we will be basing our logical decisions to turn on or turn off the lights. So, we need to just hook it up with, you know, cable junctions and whatnot. There we go. And in this case, I mean, since if you need to, you know, splice the cable, you just a tip for the beginners, you have to be using your uh, cable cutters. Yes. There we go, come on, stick it in there. Good, so that's it when it comes to the logic reader. So now the next thing that we want to be placing is beside it because the input of the logic reader will go towards the compare unit. And for that we need a kit logic processor that we have built. So let me just grab it quickly from my inventory here. Not the cable coil, but the... Hold on, let me just put away my... Right, so, there we go. And we rotate it like this, and we will use it... We can have the logic math, but we need logic compare. That's the unit which... Because we need to compare the input from the logic reader with the predefined value that we will be placing in the memory. So, this is it. Now we want to hook it up. Okay, I'm going trying to get a minimal on these cables because uh, mainly I am, as you can see, I'm very low on cable coil. So yeah, I'll need to basically make sure that you have enough cable coil. I think around 30-ish is a good number. I had 13 when starting, so yeah. I'll need to refill it some at some point. All right, so memory, yes, you can connect it directly and note that you don't need the power here because you're just reading the data value. So it's okay that that part is not powered. However, now we have logic reader, we have the compare unit, which will be comparing the, this value of the logic reader with the memory and the output should go to a batch writer. 
Now be careful here. You don't want to go to logic writer, but you want to have a batch writer. Basically, a logic writer will write on one specific device, for example, a light or, or actually the light, one and only light bulb. However, a batch writer will write to a whole class of things, meaning it will write to all of the lights. And we really want to write to all of the lights. So another tip for you is that actually because of this, you want your lights to be put on a separate network, meaning that basically the output from the batch writer only goes to those lights where, where you want to have them. So, And another thing which we did... Uh, you need to think about that all of the lights should be exactly the same. Otherwise, you need one batch writer. So, for example, if you have long lights and you have a regular light, it's you can only write to one class of these. So, be very careful. This is an error that I made before many times over. So, now, I ran out of the cable coil, so I just went to pick up some more, which I basically had some spare copper, so I've just done that so yeah i actually cut that part out because well you know harvesting cable coil i'm not sure if this is something that you guys should be really enjoying like for the 20th time at least not from uh, on my side so once again we need to splice in the cable which means wire cutters and now we are connected to these lights so batch writer will be able to write to those lights good now we need to hook hook up the input of the batch writer and the power because well it's not powered at the moment so let's put it like this and i'm gonna run out of cable won't i oh boy i was just thinking considering here for a second should i go mining but then i remembered i have another tool manufactory which i've put here so i might actually put my you know shredder and uh, recycler and the centrifuge to good use so here is an example of how you use it you, you crack, crank in the stuff that you don't need and you turn them on and basically they spit out the raw components. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> I definitely think so. All right. So, well, you know what to do with these guys. You obviously need to smelt them and put them in their respective, you know, machines to produce cable coil. Right. So, copper smelt. Yes, please. I mean, I could skip to this part, but I figured... You know, since we already in some of the previous episodes did deploy the centrifuge and the recycler, it might be a good case to see me how I use them. Basically, if you're you know just beginner and looking forward to how how to actually do it, it's quite simple and straightforward, really. Now, that being said, all right, we we'll need to build a couple of cable coil, and after that, we shall be making sure that we connect the logic chips. All right, with that thing being done, let's now hook up the rest. So. We need to hook up the input of the batch writer and we need to hook up still the power because currently power is not connected yet. Okay, right, so this is connected. Now all we need to do is configure it properly. And to do so, we will need a screwdriver. So first we'll have to configure the logic reader and that one needs to be reading from daylight sensor oh all right so we have a storm well that kind of blows so never mind let's try actually and configure daylight sensor and the value that we want to be setting is activate good so we'll have that one reading the value so daylight activate is one which is to be expected because it's daylight Right. So the logic compare needs to be reading this uh, daylight sensor. Oh, sorry, not daylight sensor, the logic reader. Oh, but that win means we should be renaming the logic reader. Okay, let's take a labeler. Let's rename. Whoa. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. So apparently, if you try to relabel a logic chip, the storm will blow you away, quite literally. Well, consider me blown away. Let me just see if that is correct. So let's try again. Oh, so the storm is over now. So we can hopefully now properly configure the logic chips. So we have configured the logic reader. It's reading the, you know, daylight sensor activate. So we will be renaming it to daylight sensor. Come on. My typing skill is off these days. Well, what can you do? Okay, so daylight sensor 
activate or active good so that one will be telling us if the daylight sensor is active and right now it's nighttime so it shouldn't be active so then we want to compare it to the logic memory and we need to set the value so we'll set the value to be wait zero or one uh, so let me see yeah we can actually do it two ways you can compare that uh, logic rigor logic reader should be active to one and then set the compare to not equals or you can actually set it that it compares to zero and then equals it doesn't really matter how you do it i mean but you have to be careful which uh, function you will call so this logic compare we're gonna call we're gonna rename it to something more that makes sense for example is it daylight i mean uh, wait Shall we call it, is it daylight or maybe is it nighttime? Because we want the output to be one, which would be equal to logic true. So uh, let me just see first. Yeah, let's set it actually, is it zero? Because in the night, uh, the uh, daylight sensor will be zero, meaning that uh, the compare should compare daylight sensor equal to zero, which should yield one if the result is equal. So, yeah. So, is it daylight is currently zero. We are going to select the the input 1. Input 1 should not be should be daylight sensor active. Correct. So, let's select daylight sensor active. Good. And then the things that we will be comparing it with should be logic memory. So, yeah, this is actually very confusing because I'm looking right up, so it gets hard to actually configure. Well, we have selected logic memory because the old it is the only thing on this line. And then we want to compare it to equal. So, uh, that means we need to rename it because it's not the question, is it daylight? Is it nighttime? Yes. And now if we check, is it night? We remove it. And since it's day, it sh the response should be zero. Good. A response zero should go to the batch writer. So the batch writer, you need to be actually reading, is it night? Exactly. And since it's reading that value, it should be writing it. So right now the value of that evaluation is zero because it's not night. And you should be writing to all wall light long value on. So let's set it. And that is it. This should be everything configured, and now let's just see if this thing will actually work. So this, if these things work, then means uh, we have... Now let's see it. A time lapse and the sun is setting. If this thing will work, that means we have completed our mission. So, lights on, let there be light. There we go. So guys, you know what to do. Don't forget to smash that like button if you like the episode and be sure to subscribe and leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.